makes you just want to sit and contemplate, doesn't it? That was beautiful. Beautiful rendition. Thank you. The reason I invited Damien, I'm getting an echo up here. The reason I've invited Damien to do the reading from Science and Mind magazine is that when I was at the big conference, which was so great, um, I really realized how they have upgraded that magazine this past year. And that reading was just one day, a one day reading out of the whole month of readings. And they have really famous people that they are interviewing and celebrating in the magazine. So I invite you to think about subscribing. But if you don't want to subscribe, at least know that they have a newsletter they send out twice a month, and it's free. You just have to go online and sign up. Great, great magazine, and I'll be using it more in the future. But what that reading was about is about you, and is about, you know, why? If you were a child, did you ever ask your mom or dad, why, why, why do I have to do this? Why do I have to do that? <laughs> Paul had a daughter that asked why at least 10 times a day. And so uh, he knows what it means to be bombarded with why and try to have all the answers. But as an adult, we usually ask why when we're trying to determine why are we even here? Why are we doing all this? What does all this mean? Why are we here in the first place? <laughs> well, when I attended the conference, uh, it was down in Irvine and it was fantastic. And afterwards, on the minister's listserv, there were all these compliments, best ever, best ever. And you know, I've been around a while, and I know that the Asilomar conferences were always the best ever. So how could a conference held in a hotel in Irvine be the best ever? It's because they presented skills for us to do even better at what we're doing. And it was the best ever. I, had, I resorted from my yellow tablet writing on both sides of it all week to writing on hotel notepads because they didn't sell any paper in the hotel. It was pretty amazing. They did a lot of workshops, whether you were a minister, a board member, or a practitioner, on how you could do it better. And one of the presentations was based on a YouTube video. The gentleman's name is Simon Sinek, S-I-N-E-K, and it was called Start With Why. And he drew three circles, little circle, another circle, and then a bigger circle. And in the little circle, he wrote the words, why? And the next circle was what? And the third circle was how? His premise was, the best way to live life is to live from the inside out. Why do we exist? How would we fulfill that purpose? And what would we do to achieve it? So I asked myself, well, why does the Science of Mind teaching even exist? And I looked in the foreword to the edition that I have, and it was the 50th anniversary edition. And a gentleman by the name of William Hornaday wrote this. The founder, Ernest Holmes, asked many of the people he met, what I really want to know are the results of your belief. Are you satisfied with the results of your belief? Where are you going in life? Most people responded, I don't know. <laughs> and Holmes would say, ah, something in you does know. So let's explore this together. His nickname was Happy. Can you imagine somebody sitting across from you going, let's explore this together. It would just be so exciting. So Dr. Holmes did years and years of study, years of research. He read all the great spiritual traditions. And it enabled him, and I love the way he put this, to see through the mist to the changeless reality. Sometimes we call that the veil. You, you pierce the veil and you see changeless reality. And so the essential premise of this philosophy, uh, we are reminded very frequently by Chris and Diana, this life is God's life. This life is perfect and this life is my life now. That's it in a nutshell. Because in Science of Mind, we believe there is a creative intelligence creating us to be spontaneous individuals, forever seeking to express ourselves in order that we may increase our knowledge. You'll find out why that's important in a minute. 
But we study first cause, which is God. We study spirit, which is God. We study the invisible essence, which is God. The power behind creation, which is God. So what's the purpose of all this? Again, and I looked on the Science of Mind glossary and I looked at purposefulness. It says our purpose is driven by an inner recognition of the divine urge. Well, for most people it would be, okay, well, what's the divine urge? So I looked that up and it's the inner desire to express life, to be more, to have more, to express more happiness. But this is interesting because how often do we get the car we want, we get the jewelry we want, the, we get the dress we want, or we get the shirt we want, and it's not too long and we're going, I need a new dress, I need a new this. We're, the satisfaction level drops. And the feeling of satisfaction seems like it's just a fleeting moment. Now we know why we have a divine urge embedded in us, a divine urge to expand, to grow, and to evolve. And guess what? It's unlimited. So if you're critical of your spouse or your friend for always wanting more, guess what? It's in our DNA. It's in how we were created. We here at the center want everyone to find out about this, to learn about this, to learn about your co-creative ability to find your path to what we call mature spirituality. Because we learn how infinite intelligence works, but actually God uses us as the perfect channel for the evolution of humanity in the whole universe. We're being used by God for that purpose. Now through our five senses, we see war, we see poverty, we see hunger, all this disharmony in the world. But the thing is, when you look at billions of years ago when the universe was created in eternity, we're here in this little part, just this little part. Are we gonna learn something here and help humanity grow and expand or are we going to do it all over again the next time, and the next time, and the next time, and the next time? So what we do here with classes, with workshops, with our services, is we try to connect the why we are here to everything we do. And the why is in our vision statement. The center is here to inspire and empower people to lead spiritually fulfilling lives. That's the why. It's not the how or the what, it's the why. So from that, we let that carry us into what we do. I think we do it pretty well. There's always ex opportunities to expand, like I would love to do online classes, things like that. We can always improve what we're doing. I came to the center in 1989 and I immediately started classes and I, I had a profound awakening that when I'm done here, I'm going to go on to another experience. It may not be in this universe, but the soul goes on forever into eternity. And my soul spends such little time here as a human being Am I really giving it all I can? Because this is part of an eternal journey. This is a temporary assignment. Why repeat lesson after lesson? We're here to help you in so many ways. So my personal um, goal is to embody more of the characteristics of God, especially peace, power, beauty, and joy. That's my personal goal. And looking at my why, how, and what, I recognize I, I, recognize I am the creator of my life. I I've learned how that works, how spiritual mind treatment works. I really still don't know exactly why, how it does it. How does the energy of my prayer and my embodiment reach out into the universe and bring something into my life I had no idea even existed? So there may be a little magic dust in the process. I don't know. 
But I know it depends upon how I relate to the world, what I think and the energy behind what I think. It's truly a participatory universe. We're doing this, co-creating every day with God, spirit, big sweetie, whatever you call it. So where we spend our time is very important. So here are three questions. Where do you spend your time? Where do you choose to spend your time? For me, ask Paul, oh, you got another book? <laughs> I read constantly, I research constantly, I love to write, I love, I love to uh, um, share this teaching in any way I can. But then I do love my husband a lot, and our cats a lot, and I do love being here with all of you. So where I, that's where I spend my time. You won't see me doing much else, actually. You know, it was interesting at the conference because I filled my notepad back both sides all the way through and I, I found myself writing in the margin. Here's another reason I exist. To know and share that everything is unfolding perfectly. You know, in this world, there's a lot of war and a lot of sadness going on and there's a lot of criticism of what's going on and people, and it seems like people feel it's okay to criticize everything no matter what. <laughs> I invite people to see this life experience from God's eyes, from the Big Bang, the billions of years into eternity, and looking at this little piece that may be only one day in your life or a month in your life, and see it from God's eyes, and see that it's all unfolding perfectly. Humanity is really trying to learn to love one another. But where does that start? starts with learning how to get along. It starts with respect, respect for one another. All that has to happen before we can really love one another. Love is a word people throw around, but it takes a lot to get to the point where you can honestly feel, I love you. I love you as a person. You know, the world needs that. But first we have to start getting along with our neighbors, with the city, with the country, with all these things we think are out there that may be against us. And we have to see a higher purpose in ourselves. You are where it starts. God made it that way. God expresses through us to move humanity forward. So that question was, where do you spend your time? What areas are you committed to growing and developing in yourself? For me, I, I love to inspire critical thinking, not, not critical that I'm going to criticize you, but that in class when we throw out these concepts of oneness, that you look at it with critical eyes and see, can I really believe that? Does, can I really check that? Look at it with a critical eye. Just don't take everything at face value. I'm committed to studying science. Ask me about the Higgs boson and I'll probably talk your ears off. But I love that because science is starting to support what Holmes wrote in the 30s. It's just an amazing thing. I like to improve my speaking skills and <laughs> Jim Quibell always says, Mary, get from behind the podium, get away from the podium. And I'm like, but there's my note, all my notes are here. <laughs> And someday I'm able to just have this photographic memory and just go click, click and walk away and you'll be, you'll be saying, why is she leaving her notes? Did she miss something? I don't know. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. I'm committed to bringing more acceptance in group interactions. I'm committed to bringing joy into situations where we we don't see the lightness of life. So what are you committed to? And then what is your per personal promise to the world? For me, it's to live the best I can in integrity, to inspire teamwork so that we're creating a future here based on the why, not the what, the why, aligning together to do that. You know, I feel so blessed to even grasp all this. 
If you'd have seen me as a teenager, I was a space cadet. I mean, honestly. <laughs> it's amazing how far I've come. And I know I've got a long way to go. That's why I'm so committed to this study. So every day I think about our vision statement. Are we, are we holding up our vision? Are we inspiring and empowering others to live spiritually fulfilling lives? And it dawned on me, you made me say, well, what in the heck is a spiritually fulfilled life? Well, I went to my library, <laughs> pulled out Rick Warren's book, The Purpose Driven Life. If you don't know Pastor Rick Warren, he has an 8,000 member church in Southern California, a bit fundamentalist and very Bible based, but that's okay. He offers all of his work to every minister in the country, and I find gems in there that I don't find anywhere else. So he says there are several ways to experience a spiritually fulfilling life. I'll give you the top three. Have a purpose to live. <laughs> Have a why. Spiritual growth is not automatic. You don't just memorize Bible, Bible phrases or things in a book. That, that's not what it's about. It's learning how to embody the characteristics of God, peace, power, beauty, and joy. How to really embody those and use those daily as your tool when you're communicating with others. Personal growth is what's important for the evolution of our soul. If we didn't personally grow in this way here when we made our transition and went on to the next one, I don't want to do this over. I want to keep my mind open at the top. I really want to embody these characteristics. Don't know how far I'll get, but I'm going to give it my good old college try, as they say. Because it is a slow process. You know, people come here and they go, okay, I'm ready to take practitioner training. <laughs> ah, patience, please. <laughs> we are a work in progress. We are a work in progress. And we recognize that when we learn something, it improves our lives. Um, we know that positive thinking helps us feel better. And when we feel better, we act better. And when we act better, we help the evolution of the planet. Even if it's only in Redding, California, we are helping that. And as we do that, our self-centeredness, our focus on ourself starts to diminish and we start looking at how we can help others. And that's when it gets really juicy. You know, I take shoes to Living Hope Ministry every couple of weeks where they hand them out to the homeless. And I went in there the other day and they had this big box of yarn because Barbara Bella knitted all those hats that they gave out last Christmas and scarves. And they said, somebody donated this and we knew you were the people that would make good use of it. So that's that reaching out. Not that I believe what they teach there, but it's a spiritual group. But they do great work, great work. And so... We're contributing positively to the evolution of people within the community. The second um, way to have a spiritually fulfilling life is being in a group of people that are like-minded people, that you're involved with them. So when you come here and you, you come here and then you go in the social hall and you take some classes and go on some field trips or do workshops, you're involving yourself with people, like-minded people, and there you are free to express love and you're free to be authentic. Special place, special place. Our ministers and practitioners are here to help you with that. We're always here. I'm always surprised how few people ask for prayer after service and don't call us during the week. Please call us. This is, what, this is our life. This is what we're here to do. This is what we want to do. Then as we continue with our growth with the spiritual family, something in us wants to take care of the center, the buildings, the landscape, the cottage, wants to take care. And that's where your donations come in. Keep the lights on, the air conditioner, keep everything going forward. And when you participate on a SEVA team, that is part of this developing community. That's what leads to a spiritually fulfilling life. When we get to know one another, we end up 
with a new level of respect for one another. How often I'll talk to somebody and I'll say, and what, what turns you on in life? What do you do? And I'm, I hear these most magnificent things. Had I not stopped to ask, I wouldn't know. There are magnificent things happening in everyone's life. And it's a fun um, pathway to learn about that. In that way, our love for one another grows and our circle grows. The circle being not only the center, but our relationships with everybody in Reading and then their relationships with other people. This is how evolution happens. The third way to develop a spiritually fulfilling life is to have principles to live by. When we apply them, we begin to change from the inside out. It's kind of like be walking in the door as a caterpillar and in no time at all you're a butterfly and you're just flitting around, just beautiful, happy, joyful. We go from clinging to freedom. The number one principle in science of mind is oneness. There is one infinite intelligence, one source, one being, which creates everything out of itself. We call it many names, God, universal spirit, intelligence. It's undivided, complete and whole. The second principle is love. And the other principles include freedom, goodness, eternal life and more. These are what guide us to live from the inside out. If I am one with you, brother and sister, how could I think less of you? How could I criticize you? How could I condemn you? I might like that you reached your spiritual maturity, so to speak. <laughs> but we're all a work in progress. You know, as ministers and practitioners, we are absolutely thrilled when you sign up for a class or come to a workshop because we know that you're consciously choosing to participate in your own spiritual evolution. You're consciously choosing to do that, hallelujah. We just wanna be cheerleaders and help you do that because of the implications. The implications, not just here, but into eternity. I believe the future holds great promise. Our human species is so young. We're still learning so much, learning how to get along, how to love. And we each can contribute to this in our own way. God has experienced itself through you, urging you with that divine urge. Love, be more. So your future begins today. And I encourage you to start with your why. Your why isn't my why. Your why is only yours. And then some morning you're going to get up and look in the mirror and you're going to smile because you'll recognize your true personal self. And it'll be beautiful. Then you can say to your neighbor, the world is unfolding perfectly. And I contribute love to that. And so it is. So let's pray for that. <laughs> Sometimes I forget the prayer, I'm so done. <laughs> and I forgot to wink at Judy. Thank you, Judy. <laughs> oh, today's a great day. It's a great day because I can share from the heart and you listen from the heart and we get what we get. But at least we're here doing something wonderful together. At least we're aware of the glory and the preciousness of life and how we want that to evolve in the future. And today we recognize it starts with us. Who, what, why, where, when? Do I check in with God? Do I check in with spiritual mind treatment? Do I check in with Ernest Holmes? What is my guiding path? Do I check in with principles? How do I give it my all to make this life unfold the best it can? 
It's important. It's precious. It's not only life changing, it's community changing, it's world changing. Humanity is counting on each one of us. And so I'm so grateful because it's not that hard, is it? To think about what I'm doing every day. Am I, am I on track with what I want to do, where I want to be, what I want to say? So I invite each one to think about that and decide your level of commitment. It may not be time. It may be past time. Only you know. So thank you, Ernest Holmes. Thank you, God. Thank you, this beautiful community, for being here today. And hear what's on my heart. I release these words to every butterfly flying in the universe this spring, bringing joy and light and love everywhere it goes. And on that note, I accept this message for myself. I accept it for you. Knowing this life is truly perfect. And so it is. Thank you.